Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. M56 is today's subject, and uh, as the uh, thumbnail states, it's a splendid place in space uh, because there's a lot more to have quick you know while you're in this area is uh, to have a quick scout around for some more interesting targets that are around m56 so uh, the best thing to do is uh, i suppose show you how to find it so without further ado here's how you can find m56 and all the treats that lie around it Right, the first thing you need to do is find and identify Lyra. <clears throat> now, Lyra, this time of year, is around about the south-southeast. Look up and you'll come to a very bright blue star. Now, Lyra's got a, quite a distinctive um, constellation. It's, only, it's, a, it's a small constellation, but it's quite a bright constellation. Like I say, it's made up with the dominant star Vega, El Vega. And uh, and it's got a distinctive squash square, as I like to call it, underneath. I think the uh, proper word is, I think, is it rhombus? A rhombus square? <laughs> squash square in my language. <laughs> so that's the constellation you need to be ta targeting. Now, of course, Vega is um, also a member of the Summer Triangle. Now, just for those who quickly don't know what the Summer Triangle is, it's made up of uh, Vega... Um, Let's try and identify, I'll bring in a bit, Deneb in Cygnus, and finally Altair in Aquila, the Eagle. And as you can see, those three stars make up a, um, if we just take the, uh, I'll just take those labels off. Oopsie daisy, sorry about that. Okay, go away, that's it. And as you can see, those three stars make up a distinctive triangle. That's just known as, some, as known as the Summer Triangle. So once you've identified that, like I say, we're in the uh, Vega area. Um, sorry, the Lyra area. So I'm just going to move up a little bit. And uh, as you can see, you can still see Cygnus in the picture there. Now, the area we need to be is just here. And if we take the bottom left-hand star of Lyra, this one here, and the bottom star of the cross in Cygnus, we'll get to that in a minute, um, then um, we draw like a, a midway bet point between those two stars. Now, slightly below midway, if we zoom in a little bit, this is where we're going to find... Uh, have we got it switched on? Might, might help if we switch it on. Uh, label da, 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 deep sky. Yeah, it should be there. There it is. Okay, I'll just zoom out so you just get a better idea of that. Um, we zoom in, and right there is M56. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, because I will just uh, go in uh, a little bit away there, just to give you an idea of how everything is, and we'll just switch the uh, constellations on just so you can work out where it is and the distance between the bottom star of Cygnus and the bottom star bottom left star of lyra and as you can see it's like roughly just a, just a bit below mid midway point now the great thing about m56 even though it's not a particularly spectacular globular cluster it lies in a rich part of the milky way and that's what gives it its special bit of charm because with the uh, dim stars of the milky way behind it um, it really does set it off. It, it, it almost looks 3D. It's it's spectacular. It really is in any small small telescope, um, and it's worth just um, just scanning around this area of the sky and just taking the breathtaking uh, views of the Milky Way that you see. Um, it takes a little while to just like get your eyes adjusted to what you're actually seeing. If you've never done that, um, I advise it. Binoculars on it dark night to do that is, is just incredible but anyway that's where m56 is now i did say we'll go back and mention this bottom star of uh, cygnus the cross or the, this one <clears throat> because this is a very special star and if you're not familiar with this star then you're in for a treat because if we just zoom into this star you'll see something very special happen to it and that it actually splits into two 
because this is the famous Albario double star. It really is a fantastic, um, probably the most beautiful double star in the night sky, to be honest. Definitely, uh, it's just one I just look forward to viewing every year it comes around. Um, now, even though this uh, graphic isn't really giving it much justice, um, they are a distinctively different colour. Uh, the one on the left is a uh, like a sapphire blue, and then the um, <clears throat> the one on the right is a much more of an amber colour. Really, you can really split the colour difference quite easily in most small telescopes. <clears throat> so while you're in this uh, particular point of the sky, while you're looking for M56, uh, it's definitely worth uh, shooting down and having a look at Albario. Now, moving up, uh, if we just switch those off, Oopsie daisy. Oopsie daisy. All over the place here. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Right, so let's just zoom out, get your bearings again. Okay, so there's M56, and uh, there's the Albario that we've just looked at. Uh, if you sweep back up towards Lyra now, of course, right in the centre, well, I'm saying, of course, if you don't know this, well, um, Bang in the centre is my favourite nebula of all time, the Ring Nebula. Now, as you can see, it, it, it's, it's almost, again, in the centre of the bottom two stars. And um, most small telescopes will sh show a distinctive ring. Um, now, you're better off, you will be better off with reflector or Cassegrain type telescopes for this uh, particular target because it is, it is a really, it is quite tiny in the field of view. Um, it's just that, you know, reflector telescopes have got a lot more, uh, a lot better light grasp. But if you do have anything three inches or above in a refractor, you're still going to have a chance, a good chance of seeing the ring nebula. Dark skies are always preferred. Um, start off with a low eyepiece, uh, low powered eyepiece at first. And when you come across the ring nebula, it kind of looks like a out of focus star. Apologize for any background noise, by the way. I've got my dog in here as well. And he's uh, <laughs> walking about on a wooden floor and probably hear him snoring every now and then. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, start off with low power and it may look like a, there's just an out of focus star at first. And that's when you want to gradually increase your power, maybe go up to a 10 millimeter eyepiece or something like that. And um, I've probably flashed oh, satellite going across, oh, a star link going across. <laughs> I'll probably flash an image up of what it's going to look like in the eyepiece. Uh, but it is amazing uh, just to see this little ring in the sky it, it, it's spectacular uh, by the way just a little info on the ring nebula um, it's so another star link going by <laughs> polluting our skies I don't know um, the um, the thing about the ring nebula um, is a really bad name for it because it's it, it's um, it's classed as a planetary nebula and um, a planet it, it, it's got absolutely nothing to do with a planet and it's got nothing to do with a nebula really um it, what you're actually seeing it's a it's a dying star basically and in the center of the ring is a dense neutron star and uh what used to be a big lively star just like our sun i suppose and all the uh, gases expelled into the space when it was dying shedding off all these layers of um debris into space uh, which causes the ring um, it's a fantastic little target to have a look at. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you can see, just around this little small area of the sky, um, there's a lot to see and do. And don't forget to have a quick scan round uh, just with binoculars or a low-powered eyepiece at the Milky Way. Um, you'll not be disappointed. Well, there you go, folks. A few more targets for you to hunt around and have a look for. Don't forget, it's always best to, when, you, when you're uh, looking for deep sky targets, it's always best to uh, get the darkest skies you can get and the moonless skies. Now, I know that's not always easy. I mean, just getting a clear night is good enough. Uh, but if you're lucky enough to get a clear night and the moon's not visible, this is the best time to do any kind of... Uh, 
deep sky work but uh, it doesn't mean that if the moon is up I mean if it's just a, a small crescent moon and it's right at the other side of the sky then maybe you've got a chance but if it's anywhere near the target that you, you're going to look for um, you're better off waiting for a better night well that about wraps another one up thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far if you've liked the video then uh, please hit that thumbs up button it really does help the channel and don't forget to hit the notifications bell uh, my uploads are a little bit all over the place at the minute and i noticed that quite a few of you are subscribed but you haven't got the notifications switched on so make sure you get that uh, notifications bell switched on because you never know that next video might be just that one you've been looking for and i've always said about this channel all my videos are um, all about giving something to you so all my videos you can take something away from them um, or hopefully take something away from them uh, so you know you're getting something free every time you watch one of my videos so what have you got to lose hit that subscribe hit that like hit that notification <laughs> well in the meantime folks take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one bye for now